Hey, thanks for joining us today on Real Faith Radio, a podcast hosted by Praise Chapel, Las Vegas. This podcast serves to host the audio versions of our services, including our weekend Sunday celebrations, our midweek Wednesday plugins, featured guest speakers, conferences such as The Well, and much, much more. If you like what you hear, Real Faith Radio is available wherever you get your podcasts from, including popular ones like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube and YouTube Music, and SoundCloud. Thanks once again for tuning in. Enjoy today's message. Oh, that is your water. That is right. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, let me just open my Bible uh, and get situated really quickly. I hope everyone's doing well tonight. Yes, doing well. All right. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, So, let's... See? i got to get situated. (laughs) I need a circle. (laughs) Um, Yep. (laughs) So, let's let's pray right now. A little octagon, right? (laughs) Uh, Father, we thank you right now for this time. Thank you that we get to just dive into your word, Lord. Thank you that we're uh, in a church here today, we're in your house, Lord, that we're learning and we're growing in your word, Lord. Uh, We're we're so thankful, Lord. Thank you. Um, We just praise you, Lord, and just give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and Lord, your word is sharper than any two-edged sword, so you pierce, Lord, our hearts with your word, Lord, and and, and let it fall, Lord, on, on, on good soil here tonight, Lord, so we thank you. Holy Spirit, we ask, I ask for your guidance and your, your direction even as uh, we dive into your word. So we, we ask these things in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, just like Pastor was saying. So he hit on all those key points <laughs> um, of exactly right what we're getting into. Uh, it's he's talking about uh, getting rid of some things. You know, as Sister Miranda was, she ended uh, the ending of chapter one, and she was really uh, touching on the call to holy living, right? Uh, and that wasn't that a great video? Uh, that little short clip, that was something to think about, right? You can be so comfortable and not make up your mind <laughs> to get out of bondage and to get out of things and then it's too late, right? And we know that we here on earth, we're here, but we're not, we're foreigners here in, in this land. We're, this is not our forever home, right? And, and so it's important to realize that, but it's also to say here, and this is what Peter is going to talk about a little bit too, is what we do here on this side of eternity, it does matter. Right, uh, and so he starts to break down some practical things of what that is actually, what that means, and what that looks like in our day-to-day lives. Uh, but it's also important to to realize what we do here matters. But we're not. This isn't our forever home. We know that there's more to than just this life here today. Uh, so let's just get into it. So chapter two, he says so. Get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. So immediately he's starting to, he starts to talk about there's some things we need to get rid of. There's, there's some things that you can't take with you now that you're in Christ, now that you've been born again, right? Chapter 1, verse 13, you know, as I was reading and studying for tonight um, throughout this, you know, these past couple weeks, and I was thinking, it's always important, right? We know you got to look back. (laughs) You got to look at the whole, all the scriptures, right? Because it's not just one apart. You have to do, you have to look at everything all together. And so it's so, it's so interesting, you know, because in verse 13 of chapter 1, 
right off the bat, he says, so think clearly and exercise self-control. That's verse 13 of chapter 1. And then he says in verse 14, so you must live as God's obedient children, okay? He says, don't slip back into your old ways. Verse 15, he says, but now you must. A little bit later on, he says, you must be holy because I'm holy. And then you go down verse 17 of chapter one. He says, so you must live in reverent fear of him during your time as foreigners in the land, right? Uh, And then he makes that point, right? Verse 19, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. Okay, and then verse 21, I'm just recapping a little bit. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God. You've placed your faith, your hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and he gave him great glory. And then it's interesting, verse 22, again, he says, you were cleansed from your sin when you obeyed the truth. So now you must, yep, you, now you, there's, there's some key words right here. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. And he gives a reason why. Why? Verse 23, you were born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. Okay, and then it ends it with that of the word of the Lord remains forever. So we can put our, our hope in our, and what are we putting our hope in, right? It, it can be easy to our possessions and when you're in bondage, just like that little video, just, we were all here, I, I believe on Wednesday, and uh, that man in his jail cell wanted to take the toilet, <laughs> he wanted to take everything. And it's like, wow, you, those things are gonna fade and if you're so caught up in those things, you're not going to walk in the freedom that Christ has already bought for you. And, and, and so know that the word of the Lord remains forever. This is, the, the word is living, it's alive, it's active, okay? And that word is the good news that was preached to you. To you. The good news is that Jesus died and he rose again. It was the precious blood of Christ. That's verse 19. We're, we're looking back at scripture. This is the good news that we have a savior, Okay, so now because you've been born again, now that you have this new life, there's a lot of must that must be done for us. You must live holy. You must be holy because I'm holy. You must live in reverent fear. And he's saying you have to now, verse one of chapter two, you have to get rid, get rid of all evil behavior. So now, you know, Peter's beginning to get really specific about what does that look like in our day-to-day reality because he's saying you must be holy and now I'm going to tell you some practical truths of what it looks like for you to be holy. If you want to be holy, there has to be things you have to get rid of that you can't take and you can't keep doing as you're living in Christ because we were once dead but now we're made alive in Christ, right? So if I'm living in Christ, then I, there are some things that I'm going to have to continue to die to, right? Our flesh, we, we're, we're still living in this body. We still have the temptation to sin. It doesn't go away, right? When you're faced with conflict, when you're faced with interactions with others, when you're faced in predicaments that, I mean, this can be the most simplest thing where someone cuts you off (laughs) when you're on the the road, right? Immediately, you can want to say something mean under your breath or out loud if you're by yourself. I I don't know what (laughs) what it is. Road rage is real and that can happen. And you have to think, wait, some of that evil behavior, some of that malice is still in my heart. Peter's saying, you got to get rid of that. And it's not just once you're born again, you, you, you get saved and yes, you're a new creation, but right, I have to work out my salvation in fear and trembling. I have to be an active participant in partnering with the Lord and saying, I'm gonna get, what, what do I need to get rid of in my life? Um, and so just off the bat, right, First Peter chapter one, Establish who we are as God's people through faith in Christ. Uh, Described why believers are called by God to li- live holy lives, right? We're to be different from those in the world around us. Um, God has set us aside. 
But just like I mentioned, he's getting specific now, and he begins telling us today there's some specific negative attitudes and actions that we have to get rid of, and we also must grow in, because in verse 2 it says, like newborn babies, there it is again, you must <laughs> crave spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. So he's saying you, right, you must be holy in everything. You have to get rid of all of these things. And now you must crave spiritual milk. In other translations, this one's the New Living Translation, but even in other uh, translations, the, the, to crave the spiritual uh, milk of which is the word of God. We must crave that. We must crave to know God, to know who he is, to know his ways, to want to read his word, because that is how we grow in to the full experience of salvation. We, we become like him by getting to know him. And when we get to know him, that means you're spending time with him. And so he says, cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. And so I, uh, I was going to bring my son's little stacker toys, <laughs> but I found the bears in the nursery. <laughs> and so, you know, when you think of, you know, in verse 1, he says, so get rid of all evil behavior. He's, so he says that, and you think about it, this is evil behavior, but it's like those commercials, like, but wait, there's more. <laughs> because... That's the evil behavior in whole, but then there's, he starts talking about uh, deceit. That's a part of evil behavior, deception, right? Um, other translations can say like get uh, malice, right? It's that ill intention for someone. Uh, like I said, this can be something of the simplest thing where someone cuts you off, someone takes your parking spot, someone anything <laughs> that you can think of, and you begin to wish something ill on someone. Maybe someone hurts you, or does something that, yeah, that hurts you, or, or, or that doesn't make you feel great, and your mind starts to go and think about, oh, I hope they, you fill in the blank. <laughs> you fill in the blank, right? That's malice. That's wishing ill on someone. And that can be easily just swept away like, I don't got no evil on me. I'm not doing witchcraft. No, that, for you to talk bad about someone, someone who was created in the image of God, wow, we're, 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 that's evil behavior. And so you have to think about it. My life and living a holy life means I have to get rid of that. Because when I unpack it from this evil behavior, there's deceit. There's, there's more. <laughs> there's hypocrisy, right? When I'm saying something, but I'm actually, I don't really mean it, or I'm do, my, my words don't line up with my actions, right? He's saying you have to get rid of those things. Those things are going to hinder your, your walk with God, and it's also, just like you go a little bit before that in chapter 122, it says, you were cleansed from your sins. Now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. So how can I love one another and deeply when I have deceit in my heart? When I have hypocrisy in my heart. And so like I was saying, this this. The sin's got to be put off. Malice, like I said, it's, it, it's all forms of wickedness, but it, it's really this, that, that ill intent, right, for someone, delu uh, deceitfulness, that you're, you're, you're not really displaying or, or, or being who you really are, right? It, it, it's that, that hypocrisy, right? And, and then he's saying... Uh, Jealousy, so this is all envies, right? Um, which is pretty much anything that gets in the way of the good or the welfare of someone else, 
you know, of their abilities or their, their prosperity or their fame or their su success in things like that. And that happens very common, right, in the work. This can happen in the workplace, but even at times this happens in, our, in church, right? We say you, you both have been praying for something for a really long time and your sister's prayer request gets answers, but yours doesn't. How is your heart? Are you mad? Are you envious? Do you, do you begin to, to question God's goodness? Right? These are things that, 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 that he's saying, you have to get rid of all this type of evil behavior. You have to catch it. You have to recognize, oh, I think there's jealousy in my heart right now. These are some of those sins that are a bit not visible. <laughs> And I think the last time when we were talking, I was talking in James about the sin of partiality showing favoritism. I'm thinking about this is something like this, right? Where this isn't, you, you're not going to see it off the bat. You're not going to know if someone's really showing something like that. But in their heart, this is a heart check for us. Where he's, Peter's saying, you have to get rid. Get rid of all of this behavior of the, of, of the deceit, of the hypocrisy of the jealousy, <laughs> and one more, of all unkind speech. <laughs> so all of that, it's all in a, it's all layered, it's all combined. And, and when we think about that, it's like, wow, if I have, if I have unkind, unkind speech, right? Uh, more than likely, there's jealousy in my heart. And if there's jealousy in my heart, more than likely, if, if someone were to ask me, Are you, hey, I, do you feel, I'm, I'm feeling like there's some type of tension between us, or even for yourself, if you're think, to, to be honest and say, I have jealousy in my heart towards you. Have you ever been honest and transparent like that to share that with someone if you really did? We've all, we, I'm, raise your hand if you've never been jealous of someone. Have you never been, have you, have you ever been jealous of someone? Never? Have you ever been jealous of someone? I'm, yeah, if you have been jealous of someone, raise your hand. And we all have been, right? There's, there's been a time. Look, now the thing is, Right? We, we have to, we get rid of those things. We ask the Lord, okay, what's going on in my heart, Lord? Where, where is this coming from? But chances are, too, if, if we're not honest with ourselves, then we're also practicing then that hypocrisy. <laughs> and where there's hypocrisy, then there's deceit. And where there's deceit, then it's all of this evil behavior altogether. <laughs> they, they, it, everything is intertwined. All of these, these behaviors it's kind of like you can't have one without the other. And so he's saying you have to get rid of everything. And like newborn, every evil behavior, and like newborn babies, you must, you must crave spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. One thing that is about children is they're constantly developing. Children are constantly developing. There's something new constantly happening. And not only that, there's a want to grow up. You think about once a baby is, you know, first they're on their tummy, but then they start seeing some cool stuff around them. <laughs> they're like, I want that. And once they get that down of the reaching, they might start to pull up a little bit and they might start to crawl a little bit because they're seeing the world around them. And so now they're using more of those big muscles. And then there comes a time where now they're balancing and now they can see everything. And then they're, they're standing and then they start taking a step. This is all like developmental progression. And so he's, he's saying this right here. Peter's saying like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. And so... He's comparing us of, of, if you want to grow, you, you must crave the word of God. If you're not wanting to grow, I question if you crave the word of God. 
if you want to grow in your walk with the Lord and you want to know him and you want to be like him and you want to walk in his ways, is that craving there for yourself where, where you're like, Lord, I need to spend time with you. I need to grow in knowing you and I need to grow in, 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 in my faith. If that desire is not there, then let it bring you to repentance so that you can say, Lord, I don't have or I haven't had the desire, but I need, your word says that I must, I must crave this spiritual milk so that I can grow into the full experience of salvation. I want to cry out for this nourishment. I want to cry out for the, for it. now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness, we have tasted the Lord's kindness, right? We have been brought in near by the blood of the Lamb. We were on our way to hell, but God in his rich grace and mercy, he brought us in. And so we have a taste of the Lord's kindness in, in our lives, how he's been faithful. There's been, I'm sure in this room, you can think about where you were before you had come to Christ and almost those experiences where if it wasn't for Christ, where would I be? We've, we've had those experiences and when you have that, you have tasted wow, Lord, you have really shown up in my life. I've seen your goodness. I've seen your kindness. And he's saying, cry out. Cry out for this nourishment. So when we're born again, right, we're becoming like these spiritual newborn babies. But there's, if you're healthy, you're yearning to grow. You're wanting to grow. You're wanting to, to, to say, I, I need to keep feasting on your word. Your Instagram scrolls are not going to sustain you in this hour. You listening to a podcast, that's someone else's revelation. But where's your revelation of who Jesus is? You can listen to podcasts. You can listen to YouTube. You can listen to the best sermons ever because there's a lot out there. You could even listen to Real Faith for Real Change 24-7 because there's some great content. But guess what? Where's your revelation of the Lord? I don't want to live on someone else's revelation of the Lord. Thank God that we have pastors, right? That they, they, it's, it's, it's a blessing. Every, most of every day when I go to, we go drop off Enzo, pastor's reading his word. <laughs> Pastor has his Bible out and pastor's studying. I'm not lying, <laughs> and I'm not just saying that. No, that's just the fruit of his life. That, that's his discipline. That's what he does. This is, I go and I, I study the word of God for myself. That's evident. He doesn't have to say that. I just see it. And so you think about that. He's wanting revelation for the Lord for himself and for the church, right, that God has called him and his wife to steward. But now there's a time of, what about me? What about you? How is my walk? How are my disciplines? How can I, if I'm just going back a little because it all lines up in verse 13, how could I think clearly if I'm not even in the right mindset of, of, of beholding who Jesus is in his word? It's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna grow up. I'm not gonna become healthy. Those things are not going to happen if I'm not craving to see the Lord every day. And so we have to ask ourselves, how is my spiritual appetite, right? How is it? You reflect, you rate yourself on a one scale of one to 10. Where, where are you at? You don't have to answer, just think about it for yourself. But how strong, how strong is that desire to read God's word? Lord, help us. <laughs> Lord, let me cry out for your nourishment. Pray the word of God because <laughs> you come into agreement with, with, with the word of God and with, with the Lord and what he's saying. Lord, I cry out for this nourishment. Right now, I'm not craving the spiritual milk, but I ask that I would crave it. Your word says I must crave it. Lord, help me to crave this, your spiritual, this spiritual milk. Reading your word, help me to grow in my appetite. Right? Those are practical things you can do to ask the Lord to give you a hunger, to give you a desire, to reflect. Is there anything in my heart that is just lurking around? 
Do I have deceit? Do I have hypocrisy? Do I have jealousy? How's my speech? How is my speech with my husband? How is my interaction with my wife? Whoever, how, how was that? Was it unkind? Right? <laughs> right? And if so, Lord, help us, right? I don't want to be that way. He says, I'm going back, verse 13, that one, chapter one. So think clearly and exercise self-control. Guess what? If you cannot exercise self-control, then you're going to have all these evil behaviors and they're going to continue. It's going to go everywhere. It's just going to leak. It's going to leak. See, the Lord made it happen. No, just kidding. Uh, but it's going to just go everywhere. It's going to happen because if you can't exercise self-control and you can't say, I'm not going to walk by the flesh, I'm going to walk by the Spirit. If I cannot do that, the Word of God says that, walk by the Spirit so you carry out the desires of the Spirit. But if you walk by the flesh, you carry out the desires of the flesh because the flesh does what is opposite of the Spirit and the Spirit does what is opposite of the flesh. So if I'm not able to say, Lord, I need to practice self-control in how I'm talking to one another, Lord, I repent. Help me, show me, Lord. Because he says this, verse four, you are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen for God, by God for great honor. So you're coming, you're coming to Christ. And as you're coming to Christ, we should always be coming to Christ. Every day, every day I come to Christ. Every day I say, Lord, I'm going to come to you. I recognize you as the living cornerstone, the one who holds it all together. He's referenced as the living cornerstone because not only did he die, but he was raised, right? It says that, that verse 21, you go back, Christ, through Christ you, you have come to trust in God. You placed your hope and faith in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You are coming to Christ who is the living cornerstone. He's not a dead God that we come to. He's alive. And guess what? He holds it all together. The church doesn't revolve around us. It revolves around the Lord. <laughs> come on. It revolves around him and he holds it all together. Things may fail. The flowers, uh, what does it say? The beauty is uh, people are like grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord remains forever. He is the living word. And he's the living word, he's the living cornerstone. And so I have to remember that, that I, I have to keep coming, keep coming, keep coming to the Lord. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And then he says in verse five, and you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priest through the mediation of Jesus Christ. You offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. As the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem chosen for great honor and anyone who trusts in him will never, never be disgraced. So I have to think, wow, am I trusting in you, Lord? Am I trusting in the living cornerstone? Because just as he's living, he's called us, we're his dwelling place right now. His, his Holy Spirit lives within us, right? And, and, as, his, and as he lives within us, he's calling us to, to come up higher, to raise a standard in our lives, to raise a standard in our conduct, to raise a standard in how we love him, but also how we love others, right? And, and, and so it says, what's more, you are his holy priests. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. As the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Yes, you who trust him recognize the honor God has given him. But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And, verse 8, he is the stone that makes people stumble. 
the rock that makes them fall. It says they stumble because they do not obey God's word, and so they meet the fate that was planned for them. So what's he saying here? He's saying to disobey the word then, it means to refuse to believe in Jesus. That's what he's saying. So those that have stumbled, they've refused to believe in him as the way, as the truth, as the lie. And, and so those who reject Christ is the path to God. They're going to stumble over Jesus. He's either the way to God or he's not. He's either the way, he's either the truth and the life, or he's not. Or the, and it's going to... Pre- when people don't believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that becomes the obstacle that prevents them from actually reaching God. And that's John 14, 6. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot get to the Father except through Jesus. And when we don't, I mean, we believers here, you believe that tonight, right? But when you think about unbelievers, when you, when, when you think about those that they didn't recognize Jesus as the Messiah, he was the stumbling block because they, they, they couldn't understand that, 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 that he was the one that, 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 that freedom, that life came through him. And so Peter, he adds that. He adds that, that those who stumble because they disobey the word, they were destined to do so. So he doesn't, he's not suggesting that they're not, respon- that they're not responsible for their disobedience. He's, he's simply putting it like the destiny of everyone who rejects Christ is to stumble over him. If you're not gonna, re- if you're not accepting Jesus in your cri- it, as Lord and Savior, then you're gonna stumble over him. He's he, he. You're not seeing him as the way, the truth, and the life. So you're going to stumble over him. But if you do recognize him as 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 the way, the truth, and the life, and he is the cornerstone. He is the one that holds everything together. He is the foundation. He. My faith in God connects me to Jesus Christ, and that creates this cornerstone that his word says that, um, but you are not like that for you are chosen people. But just before that, he, he says that um, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. So that's verse six of chapter two. As the scriptures say, I'm placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. So that verse is saying that, you know, it can feel daunting at times as you're in your journey with the Lord. It can be hard to, to say no to sin. You know, back then we're just say no to drugs. Well, this, the, these are the drugs of this world and in the life and the temptations of, of, of wanting to partner with deceit, wanting to partner with, with malice, wanting to partner with hypocrisy, wanting to partner with jealousy, wanting to partner with unkind speech. Those are the things that can still pull at your heart today. It doesn't matter how old or seasoned you are in the Lord. It does not matter. Those temptations are still there. But guess what? When you put your faith in Christ and you're saying, Lord, I'm coming to you. I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to give up right, my right to be right. I'm going to give up my right to defend myself. I will see you as vindicator, Lord. I will see you as the one who, who, who shows up and who is faithful even when I am not certain and I am not sure because your word says anyone who trusts in him will never, never be disgraced. And so in that passage from 6 through, through uh, just through 8, he's saying, you know, Peter's making that, that point that G- Jesus, he's the cornerstone. And not only this, he's the one that, that, that holds everything together. And so when you think about the structures of, of, of buildings, a good builder would invest much time and energy in choosing and shaping the perfect cornerstone. And so Jesus was an, an afterthought for our salvation. The Lord had it planned from the beginning of time. He knew and he had a plan that, to save us. God chose him, right? Verse 20 of chapter one, as your, ran, as your ransom long before the world began. So God had a plan for us. And so in this spiritual house, so to speak, Christ is that cornerstone and the building is not going to fall. His church will not fall. Those who trust and those who believe in Jesus, 
They're gonna, we are going to be vindicated by our faith. As we trust in him, as we know it's not foolish to trust the Lord. It's not foolish what the, the, the circumstances, the things that, that may pre be presented in front of you can have you question and think, who am I? How, am I? how can I trust in the Lord right now in this situation? Who am I kidding to myself? Those things can come into your mind to make you begin to second guess the word of God, to second guess his goodness. But when you go back to the word, you realize your word says anyone who trusts in you is not gonna be disgraced. I'm gonna keep trusting in you, Lord. I'm gonna keep depending on you, Lord, because you are the cornerstone. You're the one that holds everything together. And then he goes on and he says, but you are not like that, right? He says, they stumble because they do not obey God's word. Just a little bit before verse nine. And then he says, but you are not like that. You have to know that your identity in Christ defines your actions and your behavior. If you are a child of God, if you are a son, if you are a daughter, then you need, we need to act like it. I can't, get, I can't have those things with me anymore. I can't have those types of evil behaviors. That can't come with me. And now I have to start acting like I am. I am a chosen person. I am, right? He says, I am, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. Do you look at yourself like that? That's what he's saying. He's saying, you're not like that. You don't stumble because you don't obey God's word. You, you have accepted the Lord as Savior. You trust in him, so now you've got to act like it. You've got to be holy because I'm holy, right? He, says that, he said that earlier in chapter 1. You're a chosen people. You're a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result... So because of whose you are, because you're chosen, because you're royal, because you're God's very own possession, guess what? You can do hard things. <laughs> you can show the goodness of God to others. You can be kind, <laughs> in essence, right? We can tell our children that, right? You can always be kind. Always be kind. And when you think about that, as a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of, the, out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. So if I've been shown mercy, then I ought to show others mercy. Right? Be kind and compassionate, forgiving one another, just as Christ has forgiven you. He says that in, in the book of Ephesians uh, 4.32. Right? Be kind and compassionate towards one another. These are, these are things he, I mean, you were cleansed, verse 22 of chapter 1. So now you must show sincere love. All of, the, there's a lot of must, but it's not in the sense of, this is a higher calling to living. If we're living for Christ, then my behavior should reflect how Christ acted, how he displayed love, how he displayed compassion, how he demonstrated love even for Judas, right? In the midst of betrayal, he, he demonstrated how to love, sincerely love. And so... Our identity needs to inform our behavior. Your identity should inform your behavior. If you're a child of God, then I need to ask myself, how does the child of God act? If I'm a son, if I'm a daughter, how should I act? How should I behave? What should I keep and what should I let go of? <laughs> he says it right there, right, in those ver that verse one. Because you're becoming... A living stones, right? He, he, he talked about that in verse five. We're, we're, we're living and we're, we're coming together as community. And guess what? Those, as we rub each other the wrong way in those instances, we're, it shows that we're alive. 
<laughs> it shows that you still bleed. You still, there's still things that happen. But guess what? The refining takes place. And I'm able to actually apply the word of God and say, I've been shown mercy. I ought to show someone else mercy. Lord, show me how to love one another deeply, right? We're, we're, you're, you're praying the word of God and you're, we're looking at the word and we're saying, I want to be like you, Lord. If I'm your own possession, if I'm, you're saying, yes, I'm chosen, I'm royal. Your word says, I can show others the goodness of God. So this is not a, a matter of, I can't do it. You can, the word of God says that you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as people, right now you are God's people. So remember that. You, before you received no mercy, now you received God's mercy. And then it says, verse 11, Dear friends, here we go. As I think I, I was sharing a little bit about this in the beginning. He says, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior, and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. So, in essence, he's saying this. He's saying, show Christ. Show Christ wherever you go. <laughs> your foreigners, your temporary residents here, keep away from those worldly desires, those, those, those things that we're all prone to. Get rid of all of those things. Get rid of the evil behavior. Get rid of those things. Because guess what? That doesn't define you anymore. That's not your identity anymore. Know that Christ, he bought you with a high price. If you are not craving pure and spiritual milk, the word of God, then cry out for it. Ask, ask, Lord, I, your word says I must crave your pure spiritual milk. I want to grow up. I want to grow in the Lord. You ask for that and, and keep coming. He's come, come to Christ. He's a living cornerstone. He holds everything together. Things may look and seem shifted and chaotic, but guess what? He's the cornerstone. Nothing, nothing is shifting for the Lord. Let him build you. Let him, let, let him grow you. But it takes you to partner with him, amen? It takes us partnering with him and believing I, as I trust in you, Lord, I can give you these things. I can give you anything that's going on within me. But now, I'm, as I'm trusting in you, I know I'm not going to be disgraced. I'm placing my trust in you. And Lord, help me to act like a child of God. Every day, every day, something might come up, but help me and show me. Show me how to walk as my identity informs my actions. Let, let this truth that I'm chosen, that I'm royal, I can show goodness, the goodness of God to others. I can do this. And let me keep away from the worldly desires that wage war against my souls. Like I said, we're not exempt. You're not exempt to it. So be aware of it, right? Be aware of it. And be aware of how you're living, how you're living in the house with your community with us here, right? We're in your workplace, in your, with your spouse, with your friends, with your cousins. I, everyone, <laughs> be mindful because guess what? Your life is a testimony unto the Lord. It says that right there. It says, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. So I think that's it for right now. So <laughs> thank you guys and amen. So Lord, just I, I'm just gonna pray. Lord, we thank you right now for just this time where we're getting into your word and recognize 
recognizing, Lord, that you're calling us, Lord, to live, Lord, holy, Lord, to live like you, O oh Lord, to, to get rid of, Lord, all, all, all,